Hey guys, Harv here, and welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program. This, yet again, is our Space Tourism episode thing, series, finale, whatever. No, not the finale. Definitely not the finale. This is yet, uh, this is but episode 9. And we are carrying on from where we left off in the previous episode, which, for those of you who are mathematically adept like I am, was episode 8. And, uh, yes. And in that episode... With the aforementioned episode 8, we built a space plane, and we took the space plane out to lathe, and that's it there, docked onto our dual space station. Well, we didn't take it out to lathe, we took it out to this dual space station. Now, we are about to take it out to lathe, and this will take up the majority of this video. Uh, other things we're going to be doing include uh, sending our... Whatchamacallit, our shuttle, our full shuttle. The empty one is over there, just adjacent to the uh, thing we've just got Jebediah Kerman out of now. And we're going to be sending that over towards this, as well as some more fuel, because we are beginning to get low on the fuel supply here at Jewel. So we're going to keep ourselves topped up in that regard. But uh, here we go. So we have our plane, and our plane has its pilot, Jebediah Kerman, the one, the only. And, uh, nothing but good will come of this, I'm sure. What with Jebediah's awesome reputation, you know? He can fly just about anything, apart, apart from the single stage to orbit, because only Matt Kerman can fly that. Okay? Remember this. It's important. So, yes, our space plane. And, uh, it's intended for lathe, in case you haven't watched the previous episode, in which case you should! It's a series, a linear series. Not parallel. You have to go through the preceding one don't to understand everything that goes on in the next. Okay, now I've said that, uh, we'll carry on. Yes, we're trying to take this to lathe. It's an atmospheric, um, but mainly rocket engine thing. And it does need to be mainly a rocket engine, because it has to do a big burn to get to lathe. Something which I didn't consider. I hoped, in my mind, in my brain, that this thing would be able to go from the station to lathe, land, and come back. I realise now this was kind of an ignorant thing to assume, uh, but still, you know, it, it might nearly get there, might. We have got full of fuel, as we did refuel at the station, so we have just about the thrust from the LV-99, the efficiency, and uh, one and a half, or two and a half tanks of liquid fuel, that is the one metre diameter liquid fuel, to push us out all the way up to a rendezvous with, rendezvous with lathe. Uh, in the form of this encounter, which we can see there from the target nodes getting ever closer. I, I judge that by guess, by the way, you know, by guess, what does that mean? I, I guessed, I guessed, completely guessed where I should be um, when I started the burning, and it turns out it was pretty damn right. So burn, bring that parapsis down to something very low, doesn't really matter at this point. Uh, and we don't have an awful lot of fuel left, we're about... Well, we're about, I don't know, just just under half. More, th more than under half our fuel has gone. Uh, no, more than over half of fuel, our fuel has gone. We're remaining with under half our fuel capacity thing. So here we are in laid sphere of influence. And uh, the first thing to do is to slow down. Now we can either do this via rocket engine, which takes more fuel, or we can do it via air braking, which takes less. Hence the air braking. Unfortunately, our parapsis is too low to air brake, so we're going to raise it up there to 30. Uh, the atmosphere of lathe goes up to something in the region of 56 kilometers uh, from experience. In fact, I might just go onto the wiki and have a look at some interesting facts about lathe. If I type in lathe wiki to Google, does it come up with... Yes, it comes up with Kerbal Space Program first. I'm surprised. I expected the Wikipedia articles about um, engineering materials, or whatever it's called. Uh, anyway, let's have a look at lathe here as we do a bit of a flyby in the atmosphere to slow down and put us into a orbit rather than an escape trajectory. It has... Okay, it's in a circular orbit around Joule at 27,184,000 metres. Uh, compared with the 5 million meters that our space station is roughly at. So it is quite a bit of a burn to get all the way out here. Uh, it's equatorial radius is 500,000 meters. It's got a uh, acceleration due to gravity of 7.85, which we will find out later on, because I do have science equipment on this plane. Uh, what are we looking for? What's important here? Important things such as atmospheric height, 
55 kilometers. 55.262 kilometers. No, meters. F yeah, 55.262 kilometers, yes. And, uh, yeah, that's all we really need to know. And there is oxygen present on Lave, hence the air breathing engines. But, uh, anyway, we've got ourselves into orbit. After doing a few successive burns, or a few successive decelerations using the atmosphere for its, for its wonderful drag, we're going to do a little bit of burning with our, uh, our rocket engine. You know, using just a bit more of that fuel reserve, but it's fine because we have chosen our landing spot. Yes! We want to try and land on one of the the land things. Okay, we haven't chosen our landing spot exactly. We're just kind of hoping that we'll end up near one of them. My idea was to orbit and to look down from uh, a very low orbit and see which ones are the flattest. Didn't quite work. Um, because they all look really, really hilly. So that's not good for my idea of a, uh, of a, of a, of a lathe airport, essentially. Um, for the entire the entire moon to all different places around the solar system, but we do manage to find a big uh, density of landmass compared to the uh, the entire map of Lave, because yes, it is mainly ocean, just like Earth and Kerbin, but it is far higher percentage of, of ocean and water in general. So we may have to take that into consideration because tourists tourists when they go to places surely want to see the defining characteristics of those places at least you'd think that i mean tourists who go to africa don't really see the poverty they just see the wildlife but still you know the stereotypical defining aspects of those places uh which the stereotypical defining aspect of lathe is its oxygen so i guess they come here to breathe its oxygen right that, that, that's a thing yeah i mean people buy uh, Kilimanjaro and Mount Everest oxygen, don't they? So, you know, it's not that unusual. <laughs> uh, but the water, the water, I'm thinking about making a floating base. You know, some sort of floating resort. We'll have one on a very high hill, uh, because there's no mountains, so you can't really say a mountain peak hotel resort. It, they're all just hills, but, you know, a very high hill. Doesn't sound quite so impressive, but still, it, it should be a good attraction. So, a tourist resort on a very high hill, and we're also going to have a floating tourist resort, uh, probably in the middle of all these land masses, because, you know, being near the land just off the coast, not just off the coast, that implies that you just, you know, you tried to build it on the beach and it went out to sea due to coastal erosion. No, it's definitely in the water, but uh, being near a landmass means we can get some uh, some ferrying going, you know. Maybe we, maybe we can even build a floating, floating bridge or a floating road, you know. Ooh, the ideas, the ideas. Anyway, anyway, Harvey, shut up about them. We need to concentrate on the, the present. We are trying to land, but where? Because there, it's very, it's made up. The landmass is all just very small hills, as previously stated. And uh, finding a good place to land amidst those hills is a bit tricky. A few times in this video, in this recording, I thought, ooh, okay, here looks flat. And then I overshoot slightly and end up going just into the side of a hill. So, okay, okay, well, we'll miss this one. We'll go down and we'll take the next one. Also kind of hilly, have to say. So bringing the engine right down now, defining characteristics of Lave's atmosphere, because, you know, it looks a lot like Kerbin. It feels like Kerbin because you can fly a plane. But it is not, in fact, Kerbin. What a surprise. Excuse me, what a surprise. Uh, it is, in fact, a a moon, and this means that its atmosphere is not as thick, not as dense, therefore shouldn't really give as much lift, but it does, it seems to give massive amounts of lift. I don't really know much about aerospace and, you know, how plane, uh, plane wings work, uh, apparently which is the source of a lot of controversy, because there's a common idea which is wrong, but in case I'm wrong in my ideas I'm not going to say what, uh, but yeah, I, I would have thought that a uh, a less dense atmosphere would give less lift, but this thing seems to want to stay in the air quite well. Despite the fact that it's a really heavy plane for, for a space plane of its size, it's quite dense itself. Um, so yeah, I guess planes don't really work like balloons, as in if you're more dense than the surrounding atmosphere you're going to drop. I don't think they work like that, at least. <laughs> what do I know? But anyway, all the rambling aside, we're going to go for a landing. We're going to go for a landing. Come on. Travelling very fast. Oh, a bit of hesitation there, and we're down. 
surprisingly little bumping and bashing, and ooh, there's a bit of a bump, but you know, surprisingly little. I would have expected a bit more of a jolt, epic, you know, dramatic kind of bang, you almost died kind of thing. But it didn't happen, no, for some reason. So, Jebediah Kerman successfully landed the first plane on lathe, and this is the first plane on lathe, even for me. The, in the entire YouTube, in the entire world, is the first plane to land on lathe. Just, just, you're gonna have to accept this and move on, okay? This is the first plane to land on lathe, at least for me. Uh, I have surprisingly never actually taken out a an air breathing uh, apparatus, an air breathing vehicle out to lathe. Oh, and I nearly got out and dropped off then. Nearly did. Nearly. One thing I forgot to put on this, ladders, of course. It's going into space. Why would it need ladders? Um, so you do the old trick of uh, closing the landing gear, something which I learned ages ago I just kept on forgetting about. And I had, it took, you know, several videos worth of people complaining in the comments for me to realise. Don't have any ladders, close the landing gear. Especially useful in this circumstance where we have a big delta wing to act as a ramp up to the cockpit, which will hopefully work surprisingly well. Uh, but yes, so the idea, the idea being that we're here, we've found a place where we want to establish our lathe colony. It's just a bit of reconnaissance, it's not a settlement yet. I was hoping, as I said earlier, that the plane could get back to the station under its own propulsion, but that seems to not be so likely. So for the time being, Jeb is stranded here. And he did want to go run down to the ocean and do a bit of uh, swimming. Unfortunately, we did park quite far away, so that option really isn't available. And, uh, not necessarily unfortunately, jetpacks don't have the thrust to overcome the acceleration due to gravity. And, you know, for t you wouldn't want tourists being able to escape uh, <laughs> the moon. You wouldn't want them to be able to fly over any walls or whatever. There we go, dive onto the wing, there you go, awesome. But um, yeah, so jetpacks don't work, so you do have to walk or run everywhere. But you can run, there is sufficient gravity to run. Uh, a lot of moons, and especially the moon and Minmus, there's not enough gravity for you to actually sprint like that. You just have to waddle very, very slowly. But anyway, that's the plane. It can't... It probably can. It, it maybe can. It might be able to get at least back into orbit under its own fuel. It doesn't have that much left. But I don't think it'll be able to get back to the space station by itself. So we're going to leave it there for the time being. And we'll swap over to our very low Kerbin orbit space station. And we are going to prep this uh, this shuttle. This crew shuttle. This uh, Kerbin to Jewel shuttle for launch. All of our... All of our passengers here, not tourists, just test pilots for the time being, uh, were stored in a different hitchhiker storage container. Hitchhikers, that's what they're called. They're not tourists, they're hitchhikers. It's a very apt name considering the name of the part. I should really change the title, shouldn't I? Hmm. I don't think it'll appeal so much to those who don't have an inane knowledge of KSP. Yes, inane is the right word there. Get over it. Um, so yes, words. Fascinating things. Never understood them myself, but I'm told they're fascinating. So, yes, and we are transporting all of our crew, all of our Kerbals, our hitchhikers, our test pilots, and even, I don't know, what else? Our crew, there's, there's, there's four of us in here in this beautiful little interior, which I haven't seen before. Before today, I hadn't seen what it looked like. And there you can see the, uh, the nuclear deterrent symbol. You can see it out the windows, just like I specifically put it there for. Um, yes, I like that. Unfortunately, there's no view from the middle. Oh, there, there's that view. That view is perfect. That's kind of cool. And that is kind of creepy. Just saying. I so want to make that the thumbnail of this video. <laughs> but I'm not going to because I'm too sensible. Although it would probably get more views. You know what? It probably would get more views, wouldn't it? Only you know, at this point, you watching, specifically you, not anyone else, specifically you, are the only person in the world to know whether I made a massive Kerbal face the thumbnail of this video. Oh, I've said it now. I have to do it. Okay, I've done it. Now I know. <laughs> I was going to be sensible and post a picture of the plane on lathe, but no. But no, I'm going to make it a massive Kerbal face. So, so hopefully I'll get hundreds of thousands of views because of that. You never know. Um, isn't it true the big YouTubers photoshop their faces into everything? Well, I just made the thumbnail my face. Yes, that is actually what my face looks like. Have you not seen my profile picture? 
people ask me for webcam, for facecam on my streams and things. No, it would be boring. It's just me. That, that, you've already seen my face. I'm a Kerbal. T stop looking at me like that. <clears throat> uh, yes. So, um, yeah, the shuttle is prepped and ready to depart. But first, we are going to prep that uh, that fuel transfer, the fuel delivery Mark III, using the SLS-2 um, that I mentioned earlier on. And we've done some time warping, we've now got Jewel into the correct position in the sky, and we launch at four times speed in the editor, we launch this, uh, this big beast of a rocket. Really is quite large, and uh, it's carrying, it's carrying... I think it's got more than its capacity. No, no, it, it's definitely not more than its capacity. It must be just about 90 to 100 tonnes worth of fuel. Unfortunately, in the design itself, the uh, some of the fuel it's carrying to Jewel will actually be used in order to get it to Jewel. Um, the, the point is the outside four tanks are what we're really transporting. The inner ones are just, you know, for use in case of emergencies and whatnot. But here we go, doing our standard launch procedure. I, I stop showing the orbital uh, lave things. You know, when I'm going to and from lave so often. I mean, Jewel. Why, I always call Jewel lave now. For some reason, I've been calling it this entire episode. I've been calling Jewel lave. When I'm going from Kerbin to Jewel, I don't show much of the actual orbital maneuvers anymore because I think it's boring. For some reason, this doesn't seem to apply to launching. It would probably take equal time to cover every launch and orbital, you know, thing, as it will to just briefly cover going from uh, Kerb into Jewel. But I still showed the launch. I don't know why. Maybe it's just because it's more interesting, seeing the actual graphics of the world descend beneath your feet as you race upwards towards the sky atop a fiery plume of engineering magnificence. Or maybe it's just because, hey, fi uh, shiny graphics. But anyway... Um, I should totally make some sort of speech out of that, shouldn't I? I? I might write a poem. You've unlocked the creative side of me. Well done. Achievement un ach achievement unlocked. Uh, I don't know what that was. I just ramble to myself in these videos. If you don't know that by now, then welcome to the channel. So we've burnt, we've uh, done our trajectory and whatnot. We set up a maneuver node, we're following it out now, having deleted it. Because if you keep it on, it doesn't show you your actual... Um, your actual encounter markers, closest approach markers. It gets disabled for your actual trajectory, it just shows them for the plotted trajectory, these things. So we turn it off halfway through and we burn, we get our encounter as I knew we would. Unfortunately I left the uh, the thing a bit too late so we do end up spending a little bit more fuel than necessary to, uh, to go into a higher altitude in order to loiter around and wait for Jewel to catch us up so that we can get an encounter. But, you know, it's fine. In the scheme of things, it's really not much fuel. What will take uh, not much fuel again is getting this shuttle to Jewel, because we've done it before, we know exactly how much it will use. Uh, so, just in the final minute of the video, we're going to set that trajectory up, we're going to burn, and we'll leave it there, because I haven't recorded them, I haven't recorded the rest. Uh, that will be in the next video. So, here we go, warp round to the trajectory, to the manoeuvre node, and begin the burn or at least test the burn, to see the estimated burn time, which is six minutes. So we walk three minutes beforehand and we start the burn. And yeah, that's all it's said and done, really. We are, we have sent our two modules for this particular window, our two modules, off to Jewel. And now it's time, I think it's time, after nine episodes, time to start building the more touristy things. The infrastructure, I feel, is now there. We just need to make it attractive, you know. Get the, get the big views, get the awesome, get the tourism, get the money. At the end of the day, it's all about the money. So, thank you very much for watching. If you liked this video, please do like the video. Thanks again for watching, and I shall see you all next time.